Hello and welcome back to Jani.tv. In module 3, we'll focus on prompt engineering with Gemini. I'm going to walk you through the core pillars of the prompt and how Gemini is different from other models when it comes to prompting. So let's get started. When crafting an ideal prompt, you got to remember the key pillars and there are essentially four pillars. <laughs> The first one is the persona. So the persona defines the role play that the LLM would get into. This is where you would actually say you are an expert in history or you are an expert in financial analysis or you are an expert in data analysis. Essentially, you will set the persona for the LLM. Now think of persona as the who in the prompt. And once you define the persona, then comes the actual task. And the task is the verb. And this is the actual outcome you want from the LLM. Now, this is actually the what of the prompt. So this is exactly where you will define verbs like extract, summarize, translate, generate. So this is going to be a very precise action that you are assigning to the LLM. The third one is the why which is the context. Now, obviously, LLMs are, they, are, they tend to hallucinate. They are not always accurate. So you need to provide enough context. This could be in the form of grounded content. You are providing existing content or you are providing a backstory to the LLM to make sure that it knows what exactly it needs to do. So this is the why. And this will provide additional background context and backstory to the LLM. And finally, how which is the format so once you define all the three pillars then comes the the format of the outcome now this could be in json xml or a pydantic class a python list or a csv file or anything that you want so this is where you will define what is the format in which the output is going to be delivered so to summarize these are the four pillars persona which is the who of the prompt task the what, context, the why, and format, how. So you need to remember this when you are crafting the ideal prompt. Now let's take a look at the demo, which will highlight this. All right, so here we are in the notebook. Now you're already familiar in the previous module, I have covered how to set up the environment. So I'm importing the modules, initializing the Gemini client, and then I go about defining the prompt. So as you can see, I have structured the prompt exactly based on the four pillars. I define the persona where I'm saying you are a veteran financial advisor with 20 years of experience. This is the who and then we define the task which is the what which is summarize the key risks and opportunities and the context. The client is 45 years old, has a moderate risk tolerance. Now this is the backstory and this is the why. Why are we asking the LLM for a specific task? And finally, the format. Present your answer as a bullet point list separating risks and opportunities. So this is the actual prompt. Now let's go ahead and run this and this will make this very clear. So let me start from the very beginning. So we'll initialize the client, we will initialize the prompt and then we will generate the response. So this is going to generate the response based on the format where we said use the bullet. So it has essentially generated a markdown content uh, based on the format that we mentioned. Let's take a look at another prompt. Everything remains the same, the persona, task, context, but the format here is based on a JSON object. So let's run this. So when we actually use a model like Gemini 2.0 Flash and with the core pillars of the prompt, we are going to get back this time a JSON object. And this is more programmer friendly if you are consuming this in, let's say, JavaScript or Python, this makes it easy to integrate with your UI or with your API. So to summarize, your prompt should have persona, task, context, and format. So remember this when you're crafting your prompts for Gemini, not just for Gemini, but any LLM will actually work better when you follow this structure. While defining the prompt, it's also important to understand the concept of a context window. So the context window is the maximum amount of information that a Gemini model can process at once. This includes both your input prompt and the content that their LLM is generating. So the sum of these two are measured in tokens. 
think of token as roughly 75% of a word. So the number of tokens will define the actual context window size. For example, Gemini 1.5 Pro supports up to 2 million tokens. And that translates to summarizing 8 novels, analyzing 50,000 lines of code, and searching 3,000 page document in one go. Now this is massive. So a context window essentially defines what is the acceptable input to the LLM and also what is the maximum amount of content that the LLM can generate. Now when you are inputting or sending the prompt to the LLM, make sure you are within the limits of the context window. Sometimes you can also apply a filter that is going to restrict the output to the context because when you are dealing with LLMs, tokens are the new currency. So you have to make sure that you are optimizing your prompt and the output for the tokens. So as I mentioned, a token is roughly equivalent to 75% of a word. Of course, this is not exactly the same with every LLM, but you can roughly uh, measure tokens as a subset of the word. So you have to make sure that your prompt resides within the limits of the context window size and also you're optimizing for the context because ultimately tokens are the new currency and you should spend tokens very wisely. So let's take a look at the demo. So this demo I want to focus on some of the prompt engineering techniques. So let's start by importing the modules and then initializing the client and the first technique that I want to introduce is called zero shot prompting where we provide almost no example to the LLM, but expect the LLM to come back with an outcome. So here it is called zero shot prompt because we are asking the LLM to classify the content with no examples provided. So when you generate this, let me run this, it is not defined. So this is coming back with the sentiment analysis of this text and it is calling this as neutral. Now, one shot prompting is a technique where you provide at least one example. So here I provide an example, the product is terrible, the sentiment is negative and here I think the vacation was nice but let's change this to the vacation was not, was not good. So now this is going to be the content that I want to generate. So let's go ahead and run this. Now it's going to come back with, okay, I need to print the response. So this is one shot and it is negative. So you can change this and run it again and it is going to basically analyze the sentiment and come back with the response. So here we are providing at least one example to the LLM to come back with the response. Then we have the few shot prompting where we provide multiple such examples and let the LLM decide the outcome. So here I provide two examples. One is negative, one is positive, and then we have the third one where I want the LLM to classify. So let's run this, and you will notice that this is neutral. So this is a technique which is used often because the LLMs, unlike other models, need not be trained. For example, if you had to perform sentiment analysis with a typical NLP model, you need a lot of training data. The advantage with LLMs is you don't need such labeled data and you can use prompt engineering techniques to perform a variety of analysis, including sentiment analysis. And this demo essentially showed you how you can use zero shot, one shot and few shot to perform sentiment analysis, but you can use this for a variety of other use cases. Now let's understand how prompting Gemini is different from other LLMs. So the first one is the native multimodal prompting. You can embed text and images and send that as a single prompt to Gemini. And Gemini is quite capable of understanding the content within the image, the text that you are sending and coming back with the exact response. So multimodal prompting is very unique to, to Gemini. So the second one is real-time data and Google ecosystem integration. In the upcoming demos, I'm going to demonstrate how you can do this, but the beauty of using Gemini API is you can ground the results based on Google search or even a specific URL. So this is going to ensure that your LLM response is not based on a hallucination, but it is grounded in the Google search response or the, the content available in a specific website. So you can mention that as a part of the prompt, which is very advantageous. And then Gemini has tremendous control on 
how you can generate the output. So you can customize and control the output. The configuration of generation gives you very granular control, you know, all the way from temperature to top P, top K, and the number of tokens. So you have a lot of control on how you can extract the output from the LLM. And then there is structured output and format flexibility. When you are generating content, you can opt for JSON or XML or simple text or a bulleted list or a Python list or in a specific code format. Gemini will honor any of the output format that you have requested for and will generate based on that. We have already seen this in the very first demo. And finally, it is based on the roles and contextual prompting. This goes back to our pillars where we talked about persona and performing the contextual prompting. So Gemini works very well when you have a role-based uh, prompt combined with contextual content, so which is the backstory. So these are the five ways that Gemini prompts are different. Of course, these are applicable for other LMs as well, but Gemini stands out when it comes to prompting because of these five techniques. Finally, I want to talk to you about a technique that is very unique to Gemini called controlled reasoning. So controlled reasoning manages the cognitive process of the model by giving a budget based on tokens. So it balances the response quality versus the cost. And it is very critical for large scale enterprise deployments. What I mean by this is when you are generating content, you can use some of the models that can think and that can perform reasoning. But letting the LLM reason can be a rabbit hole. It can go very deep and it can consume a lot of tokens and you might see massive cost impacting that specific prompt. So how can you use best of both? Well, you can set aside a budget for Gemini, which is called the thinking budget. For example, in this prompt, I am actually giving the thinking budget as 1024 tokens. So these are the tokens allocated for reasoning. Now, Gemini will honor this and it will spend those many tokens that are allocated for thinking. So this is a mechanism where you can wisely use the thinking budget without going through the limits or without seeing a surprise on your credit card bill. So that is control reasoning. Let me show you a demo of how we can leverage control reasoning. Okay, so let me show you how we can basically perform control reasoning with a thinking prompt. So here is the prompt that follows the same technique of persona, context, task, and everything. So we define the prompt, but when we are generating the response, we are configuring a thinking jet. So here, if you notice, there is config types is equal to generate content config, and we are creating the thinking budget based on 1024 tokens. So this is going to control how far the LLM can go when it is performing reasoning or thinking. So let's run this. And this is going to take a while because we are going to let the model perform reasoning. So we are giving some time for it to think. And when the output is generated, it looks like this. So the difference between the previous prompts and this is we are setting aside number of tokens for the thinking or controlled reasoning. This is called controlled reasoning because we are essentially configuring the LLM in terms of number of tokens allocated for thinking. So that was a brief introduction to Gemini's prompt engineering. I hope you found this session useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to bring you more content on Gemini and ADK. Stay tuned.